pretty much all the way through a Maxter, I just use blue Loctite. I found this stuff to be pretty neat. It's actually blue Loctite gel, so it doesn't tend to run all over the place. Start with the balls around the outside of the swash, since they all use the same sprue and are all the same matching ball. Typically, whenever I'm building a Maxter or Rico, actually a Maxter, I've only built Maxters up till now, usually try to go from the most common parts first. So in this circumstance, I'm going to want the balls that have medium shanks on them for the outer balls. There should be three of them in here. And there they are right there. Set screw goes to the shaft collar. That won't be going on until later. And then we're going to have to select three of the same length screws, which are going to be these ones right here. The manual diagrams which part number goes where. So these slightly shorter length screws should be seven of them. are M1.6 by 6. So those and those. You basically start off by getting them started on your driver through the ball. A little bit will stick out. I usually secure it with my finger there. And then get a little Loctite coming out. Get just a little dab into the threads, that'll be enough. And just thread them on in. Oops. Yeah, that's right one. Now, those are the those are the balls at 120 degree. This one up here is going to be the anti-rotation, so that's going to actually get a long shank ball, which there's only one of, you see right there. And it's going to get a corresponding longer screw, which is the one longer screw in this set. It's an M1.6 by 8. So, move on to that. And notice, by doing, doing it in that order, I've now got all these ones that are short shanked, so those are the ones that are going to go on the inner swash. So now we're ready to start work on the inner swash. Now we have the completed swash. Make sure that it turns freely. None of the screws, screw heads catch on any of the arms of the swash. Pretty much ready to go. Now the diagram, this is where it gets a little tricky. Most of the time, the gear diagram is upside down. You're actually looking at, instead of the top of the gear, you're actually looking at the bottom of the gear. Be very careful not to get confused when they, when they flip the diagrams on you like that. So, from experience on the Maxer, I know that this is the lower portion of the one way, and that cups the upper. So what I was saying is that this is the upper half of the one-way assembly. One-way assembly actually has the one-way bearing sandwiched by two small ball bearings. So the trick here is that you have to actually make sure, because I've actually forgotten this once or twice, and get this bearing pressed into that cup first so that it 
when you go to put the one-way in, you don't have to take the one-way back out to try and get it in the right position. This socket will be the right size so I can just press the push the bearing in from the outer race. The thing of importance here is that you're not pushing on the inner race. If you push on the inner race hard, you end up not making the bearing, bearing notchy and reducing the effectiveness of the drivetrain. So, combination of that, getting it lined up. Typically, a tool that's non magnetic would be better. It's lined up. Should be able to, let's see, I mean, do this so I don't reduce the light as much. Just kind of press it in there. Once it's actually started, you can actually use the one way to press that bearing the rest of the way into place. Make sure it's going to line up, be centered, flat. Make sure it's going to stay in place. And we can move on to pressing in the bearing. Now the one-way bearing, we're actually viewing the bottom of the upper one-way cup. So the writing goes toward the bottom. So in this case, up towards our face. None of this requires Loctite, but it is good to get this thing started first. It's all press fit together. And then once that's press fit together, uh, as I'll show you how to do with the vise, it's typically the way that I press it together. It keeps it nice and flat and parallel. So, slide these parts to the side. Be careful, there is a little white gear spacer here that, if you're working on a white surface like I am, can get lost. Once we have that bearing lined up, it's not quite straight yet, but it'll get there. You want to go in as easy as possible. Take your time. Once you get it started, feel it engage. I usually back off and spin it to make sure that it's relatively flat. Also, check the direction of the one-way without fully assembling everything. This is the one-way lock sleeve. You can actually take that, insert it into the bearing, and make sure that the freewheel direction is the correct direction, which it is. want to, you can lightly wrap this in with a hammer. I still suggest a vise over any type of force tool on this. I'm going to go ahead and continue pressing this in. See, it's moving slowly. It's just, it's going to take a bit.